guys welcome back to another episode of minutes with m and m i'm missa and this is mena and we're happy to have you back today we're going to be talking about a new netflix show that just dropped beef um it's about these two people who got into a road rage incident and it just kind of spirals into something else so it's it's very interesting yeah so I don't even understand road rage. Let's just start from there. You know how I am, like, about scary instances with strange people. What if someone had a gun? Anyway, the escalation in this show is insane. And my favorite thing is that it's not actually impossible based on the places that they were in in both of their lives. Like, yeah. nobody did anything crazy like, oh, I'm going to, like, bomb a church. It just, little things kept getting worse and worse. And yeah. you know what? Honestly, the first thing I want to talk about is how... Danny slash Daniel is the worst person on the planet and deserves to go to hell. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Like, I know at the end, obviously spoilers for the whole TV show if you haven't seen it yet. It's really good. You should watch it. It's 824. Um, Danny's a bad guy. And at the end of the show, Amy's like feeling bad because they bonded through their traumatic car accident, drug hallucination nonsense. But this man is literally the cause of everything. Like, yes, she had road rage too, but he took it to the next, like, chasing her in the first place, coming to her house to pee, and then finding out that his evil just spreads in different direction. He's the reason that Paul didn't go to college. He was rooting to lie that Amy committed arson. Like, his was more than like rage. There was just an actual evilness in his spirit that I feel like the show, not the show, that Amy was too forgiving of. I don't know. I. I feel like both of them are equally bad people. They're just really, really bad. But I'm more upset with Danny because I feel like he's a useless person. <laughs> he's the kind of person who expects to do nothing but expects good things to come and happen to him. He was always looking for shortcuts to get to wherever he wanted. Like, do your contracting business or construction business. No bad customer service nobody likes you they are screaming to fire you from like the window <laughs> that's gone you could have worked in fucking mcdonald's you could have worked in best buy you could have figured something else out but you didn't do any of that and then you are sad that you don't have money how and then you have the guts to be treating paul like shit when you threw away his college application letters and derailed his life and derailed his life so to me it was just like he didn't make one good decision throughout the entire show like you had 20k cash lent to you and you're like i'm gonna put it in bitcoin this thing that i haven't researched this thing that i have no idea i just saw the graph going up and i was like okay i'm <laughs> going to borrow from my felon cousin 20k like you could have used that to actually invest in your business use that to upgrade it get yourself a nice office actually make a good name for yourself but you were like no i'm going to put this into bitcoin next day it was gone who do you blame you blame everyone but you you just kind of lash out at the world like at some point i had to ask like what's he expecting like he has not actually like sown anything so what do you want to reap no but like that's what i mean by he's so shitty because like even working with isaac like isaac is the reason your parents have been deported to korea and you're still working. hanging out with isaac like the first time paul sees isaac even for the first few episodes he's furious as he rightfully should be because you literally ruined our lives and my good man Danny is still working on it. Which is why it's crazy to me that you're saying they're both bad because all Amy, the worst thing Amy did was cheat and like not tell Daniel about her road rage. That's the worst thing she what, did. What else did she do that was so bad? Um, got Jordan killed and robbed. Okay, well, that's after her child has been kidnapped. Anything you do to protect your child at that point, I'm fine with it because what should I do? I don't know. What she did to Paul wasn't great. Catfishing him and like yeah, but him she, along. But she told him right away, like, yeah, I catfished you on Instagram. First of all, Paul, they told you it was a bot. Next time, listen to you when your brother is warning you. But then when she meets him in person, she immediately, she's like, this is me. He's the one that still kisses her, knowing her age, knowing that she's married, wants to... At that well, point... she's adults in this situation. She's a married one. She has more responsibility. I don't know. I, like, I get what you're saying, like, in terms of, like, the things that they did. So I can see how it makes sense but like what Amy did and how she ruined her family kind of doesn't sit well with me especially when like like you have a daughter who has anxiety you have somebody who like needs you to be there and I know that it's like it's not great when you are actually depressed and you feel alone and like your husband is this happy-go-lucky breathing meditate kind of person 
But I guess every once in a while he does try to ask her, but like she felt like I think it's already at that point where she's just like, you would never understand like what I'm going through. So So the thing is that like at the end of the day, George is more right, but I honestly hated George. Like he did some right things, but he made so many like little comments and decisions that just irritated the hell out of me and his entire personality puts me off. Like it's very much I grew up privileged and I don't have any sense because I don't know why you're making these ugly vases. And no, and you're still asking me to sell them, but nobody's buying them because everyone walks around Amy and acts like, oh, you married into a rich family, but she's the breadwinner. She's the one bringing the money. She's the one who's buying the house and keeping them afloat. And he's doing his whole, oh, let's meditate. Oh, good vibes only. And I'm super stressed. I want to spend time with my kid. And when I say these things to you, minimize them. My babe was telling him I have depression. He said, oh yeah, I get down too, but I embrace it. Like his whole energy just annoyed me so much especially like there's a little scene at the beginning where you know him and Fumi his mom are looking at um June's paintings and they're like oh she needs an art to um, art teacher you know they kind of insinuated her art was bad and like Amy's like hey let's not put this pressure on her yeah. and the two of them are kind of like mm, look at you little bro you don't know arts honestly you are so right <sighs> like looking at it like that it definitely makes Danny seem a lot more like crazy than she, <laughs> she is like I think she's just like she just felt alone like for me, piss me off. You are literally leeching off <laughs> us. Off me, mostly. And you have the right to come into my house and be like, hmm, you need another renovation. Knowing fully well I just renovated, you're actually mad and you have no respect. And you have no money. That's the thing. You're looking down on me. Like, I am actually financing your entire life. All this money, everything you're spending is mine. And you're talking about me this way. I will say that by the end of the show, I actually quite liked Fumi. But her energy was so bad. And it made sense that George is the way he is. Because look at who raised you. Also, I'm sorry, I'm, I can't be done with George. Because the only reason Amy was so insecure in the first place is because George had already started that emotional relationship with Maya, uh, Mia. And was gaslighting Amy. He was like, oh, I'm just reading the comments on her picture. Oh, I, I, I took a screenshot. And that's really, like, I'm not saying that that makes what amy did okay but that's kind of the catalyst that actually pushed her into like continuing things with paul yeah. not that it's okay so like george is like at the end like yeah okay obviously it escalated our child was kidnapped someone almost you know okay 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 but it was just like it just gives me rich person is going to continue being rich and he's going to divorce her and get 50 percent of her money and have all the custody of june and it's like if you had been a better more supportive husband we wouldn't have been in this situation in the first place talking about i want to go to my men's group you you don't do anything what oh god i like that they actually showed um road rage or depression and all of that from like two different like socioeconomic class like classes um because daddy was poor and like amy like because i had someone tell me like that oh they don't understand like why amy was so sad because she had like a child she had a husband she was rich and I'm like, well, that doesn't really matter. Like, if you are feeling alone, you're going to feel alone. Like, if you have issues, you're going to have issues. And I love that they did that. Plus, like, I like them showing kind of her entire upbringing. And this is another thing. The social economic class thing is on a couple of different levels. Because you have Danny, who's poor, been poor, still poor. You have Amy, who didn't grow up rich like she's entirely self-made you have george that grew up with wealth but doesn't have any money and then you have like jordan who's just stupidly rich so like there are lots of levels to this and um but with amy specifically like the fact that she grew up poor and like she had so much anxiety about money and feeling the need to make more like makes sense because of where her background comes from but at the end of the day you are still a rich woman now like yes we sympathize with the baggies that you have but last, last, you did just renovate this entire house. You, you know, mm -hmm. you can buy a new car. You can afford to bribe someone who's $25,000 to try and get him to life for you. Like, you're in a yeah. much better place than Danny is. Exactly. And it's, like, interesting to me that it seemed like Amy was in therapy. But it wasn't working? Well, she wasn't in therapy. She went to the therapist that Danny had well, gone for them. Therapy, right? Yeah, but then she went by herself and spoke to him. But, like, yeah, she, oh, my God. That scene where we see her in 2008 where she's hooking up with a stranger and then she looks into the mirror and it's like the witch's face. The first time I saw it, I actually just like... That, that face was so scary. It was so... Like, why? Why does it have to be like that? <laughs> first of all, I love the logic for it. Like, they, they, we went backward in her timeline and we see the first time she sees it. And then, first of all, the actress that did that role was fire. Because she really said, you know, I won't tell anyone because if I tell anyone, nobody will love you. And that's like a perfect example of how something in your childhood can actually just shape who you become as a person. Because it was her parents fighting and the implication that they didn't want her. And then, you know, secretly eating and then she just stuck onto this scary little picture it was giving real doll vibes and now she's in her 30s and every time she does something bad she sees that scary ass white face looking at her that is terrifying yeah 
I that, was terrified. Oh my god, it's so scary. But I, I like like that we we as an audience want to see a physical manifestation of what's going on in her head. Because that thing that person asked you about, why she's so sad, like bro mental health isn't normal like it's not like oh you're rich so you're happy there's stuff other under the surface and even mm -hmm. the way she spoke about her relationship with george about how she's so broken and she shouldn't have kids and then she met george and she was like oh his good parts will make it worth it. it's like babe you have a lot of like issues about how you see yourself and mm -hmm. the way you've married this man that you kind of hate because you thought he was a good man nobody has won here yeah and it's interesting because the relationship she had with her parents it seemed good like but it seemed very surface level it seemed like they didn't really talk or mm -hmm. communicate about the things that she wanted them to mm -hmm. and i don't know if she if they knew that she was overhearing them like fighting about like how they didn't want the child and all of that but all of that can really like affect you like those are memories that you just hold on to mm -hmm. and you just feel like you are not worth it like my parents didn't want me so why should anyone want me and i think she brought that like mentality into our marriage as well 100 percent. and like honestly can we just like shout out to like immigrant parent representation on like obviously we're not asian but like you know amy's dad expecting her to buy them a nicer house near them or like um danny's parents overworking themselves and him feeling guilty and like he has to provide and like all that, like bro the stress and the pressure is so real but also like the comparisons that oh john's kid said this and john Excuse me. I'm not John. I, I'm really not. <laughs> and like, w let's focus on my success. Cause like what Amy achieved is impressive, especially as an Asian woman. And she made herself a billion, I'm sorry, a millionaire based on plants. By the way, I like how she's like, I Googled it. I don't know this stuff, but like, it's just so frustrating. Cause how do you heal that? Her dad got up and walked out and she was really just trying to talk to him. She tried to bring up to her mom about the stuff she knew. And her mom was like, we don't need to talk about that. Mm -hmm. How am I going to heal if we can't open any of these things up? Exactly. Um, yeah no the it was i i like the mental health portrait i think we talk about mental health in every show like show we talk about but even on danny's side i talk so much shit about him but he clearly had his own demons because that the first time we see him trying to kill himself with the um the girls I actually got really really sad because i'm like oh like you're kind of a shit person but you are not in a good place whatsoever and it's it, he was very self-destructive i think it's part of it like he had all these problems and he didn't look inwards he didn't try and get help he didn't believe in western therapy for eastern minds but you're not okay dude like you need to do something yep you need to do something like it's i think his story frustrates me the most because like being poor sucks <laughs> like being poor sucks but you did not have to be in this situation mm -hmm. like you didn't have to be in the situation. You literally, your brother could have been helping you right now. Mm -hmm. If he went to college, if he got a job, he could have been helping you right now with like his network or something like that. And you could have, you have a business, you have a proper registered business that you have to, you can, you can actually use it to apply for loans. The 20K, you could have used it as capital. Like, what's your problem? Like, what actually is his problem? If he was putting so much pressure on himself and Paul called out, he's like, oh, I have to marry a nice Korean girl. I have to start a business. I have to take care of mom and dad. And I understand the, the pressure being put on someone as a firstborn and you kind of see his, you know, memories where his dad is saying, you're the first, you have to do X, Y, Z. But like, he should have listened to Paul where it's like, it doesn't matter that you're the first. You need to take a step back here because all these things you're doing are trying to kill you. Like, you don't need to build your parents a house like even sending them money back home would be helpful it doesn't yeah. mean your dad doesn't need to work as much but he had all these expectations that he set of himself and he's like i have to do xyz even though it's literally killing me and even though i hate him when that scene where they arrive at the house and it's burning i feel so bad for him because like this is everything you've worked for and literally your parents even get to stay in the house for one night mm -hmm. and it's just all so disappointing paul was an idiot but at various points in the show, he made some very reasonable statements. Yeah. And I think a lot of his quote unquote idiocy is probably him just kind of, after he didn't get into any school, he probably was just kind of like, oh, I'm not that smart. Yeah. Schools didn't get me. And like, I'm kind of just the failure loser brother. And he's yeah. playing video games and just giving up on life. And it's entirely not that he's not actually intelligent. Mm -hmm. He just kind of gave up. Cause like there is no, I, I can't say there's one thing that Paul did that was like, you are kind of stupid. I mean, him going to go tell amy's husband that they had sex was so weird to me like you knew she was a married woman okay you didn't know who exactly she was but now that you've come to this how who would this I have helped i understood it because like when you're watching a show like beef and everyone's just kind of being crazy like <laughs> paul's every action paul took made sense to me 
like he was hurt he thought that she was the one who literally burned their parents no but she did down. that before like she, he went to her house after um danny told him that she was oh, amy okay, okay. and it's like i know you're upset but like you already knew she was married and she already dumped you eight months ago like this even the way he chased herself. I'm just saying it's semi-normal. It's a it, semi-normal reaction yeah. to having your feelings hurt or whatever, whatever. Or like, like having your expectations like be not what you thought it was. Because you really thought, oh, I have a connection with this babe. And then he finds out that, no, no, this entire thing you thought you knew. You thought that, yes, even though Danny doesn't know who I'm dating, he thinks I'm being catfish. He thinks it's Kayla. I know it's Amy. I know she's married. We have a thing. We text. They were texting a lot. She was mm -hmm. literally talking to Paul a lot. And so he thought they had a thing only to find out that, oh, actually, the entire thing was still in relation to this road rage thing that I keep <laughs> hearing about. So I understand him having that rash reaction. But everything else he did or said, I was like, this guy actually has all the elements to actually be something. But his brother is really just bringing him down. I agree. But I also don't know why Paul was so into Amy. Like when he went to Vegas, even though she didn't ask him to come and, you know, why are you so into... Like, I think she's funny and cool, but like, they hadn't even, like... Had they sex told then. Him they've been talking on Instagram. I mean, I guess. Like, because we, I know we've only been talking for, but it feels like you relax, take a step back. Because I feel like Amy was really like she started. It started out as like a catfish thing. Yeah. But she was really like, well, this is somebody I'm catfishing. I, I may as well just tell him the truth about what's going on in my life. And I think they actually connected that. No, way. I agree. I think they did have an emotional connection, but bro, it's been a few weeks. Like, let's let's relax a second. This you are you fall in love in one week stop doing that if you're falling in love in one week you need to stop the, love no no but yeah paul was pr definitely on the like if i had to rank characters from good to bad he was way more on the good side then like i think him and juni are probably it for me in terms of Junie? oh the little girl <laughs> <laughs> that's it in fact speaking of characters i hate can we start with naomi i'm so sorry what is your problem what? I mean, I she's just like she doesn't have a direction in life and she doesn't have friends that's really her problem like it's not my fault your life is lonely i don't know why you're playing little girl detective i don't know why you want to ruin my life we just met go away did they just meet yeah I, th I thought they, they met through jordan friends. like they okay. like we make like they've met through jordan and then they realized they live near each other and they were starting yeah. kind of a friendship and it was like she was just so fake. She kept like she she when she was commenting on um, Amy's photograph and she was like, "Oh, such a fake bitch." I'm like, "Pot's calling the kettle black." Like she really just wanted to bring Amy down. And then like later when she ends up married to Jordan, which is how you know she's a terrible person. Who marries their sister-in-law? Terrible. You've ruined a family with that behavior. You know what? I think she was just very overly ambitious. Like every single me. relationship that she had, it was trying to get somewhere. So she was trying to get closer to Amy because Amy was getting like so much success and like. Like Jordan was investing in her business and then she wanted the um, referral letter for the people's magazine or whatever so it's like everybody she's with she wants something from them either like status like respect whatever whatever and like when she saw that the brother wasn't doing anything for her she was like let me go to the main person the main billionaire who is lonely who's offering people trips on their private jets for no reason so she's like yes let me actually I really think she's that kind of person like I think there is no relationship that she's just in for just oh yeah i like you i hate the bored rich wife like rich housewife trope it annoys me so much literally go do anything go to france like my girl is she i've actually, done it all i'm tired i hate her like it, at first, when we find out that she's married to jordan and, and like after the eight months time jump i was like okay maybe you were just in love with jordan and that's why you're the way you are but then she was still being all icky to amy like amy doesn't want your wife why are you like this get she's a hobby jealous. Find a job, do something. I'm so sorry that you're bored and your clothes don't make you feel better. Like it was, <laughs> like you know she has a child. Focus on your child. I did not know. Like they were talking about how their kids are the same age. Like, it just look for what you want to do with your life because it's so empty. And I was look when Amy was like, oh, because you have so much free time. I'm like yes, drag her. Can you? My girl was carrying trash that she found in the neighbor's house to to pin something on Amy for what reason? I don't know. So like be my friend or else and she's a fake b because jordan was running and saying and hey, wait not yet and my girl still closed the door and now you've accidentally killed jordan because what was it really an accident maybe she's in the wheel like because you, know? you were mad that her and amy were talking 
Now you've killed your wife that you literally Yeah, go. maybe she thought the door was just going to close and she would be able to open it and be like, oops. I don't believe that because she, um, Jordan didn't even know about certain things in the house. You know, she would kind of ask and um, like um, Naomi would be the one like, oh yeah, that door isn't worth it. My girl, maybe you didn't mean to kill her. I think she was trying to close the door before Jordan got there. I don't think she meant to smash her in it, but why? Why wouldn't you let your wife come to safety with you? You're a bad person. You're a selfish, horrible, bad person. I'm glad she's traumatized. I'm glad that she watched Jordan die and now she feels terrible. I feel like oh, people who watch so all our videos think I'm a horrible person because I keep. <laughs> Guys, I'm not a terrible person. I just like it when the come offense is immediate and swift. <laughs> yeah, that was traumatizing to even watch. Girl, oh my, the way Jordan got killed. Oh my, that must have been so painful. Jeez, oh my gosh. I just. It's like everybody, like Isaac was just crazy to me because you came out of jail and you're like, yeah, let me continue my fraudulent practices. And then he was plotting Danny's <laughs> death in jail. It's just the entire relationship. It's so interesting to me because it's like maybe Danny thought that he couldn't do anything without Isaac. But then Isaac was always kind of, uh, what's the word? Controlling? Yeah, controlling and like not really giving him what they agreed to give him or whatever like things like that so it's like i don't understand that their relationship i well. mean i kind of get it because i think the root of it is that they're family and to a degree they expect a certain level of loyalty from each other because they're related especially on isaac's side because the reason he wanted to kill danny is because danny fucked him over and danny didn't have to really do that he did that out of his own selfish needs but i didn't feel bad for isaac because isaac is terrible like you're a criminal who is fucking over your family with your activities so it sucks for you you went to jail i don't care but like them danny just being fine with isaac taking the fall is conflicting for me because on one hand like isaac deserves it you send his parents to jail but on the other hand, i'm like you're really gonna steal 500k from this guy you're just gonna steal his money from the rice cookers and let him rot in jail i understood that completely because danny doesn't seem to have a conscience or a strong one. No, because like what he did by throwing away Paul's letters, that was when I really truly understood the kind of person he was. Like he's gonna throw everyone under the bus for his own selfish reasons. If you ask him why he did that, he would just be like, Well, you know, I just wanted you to stay with me and like I'm supposed to be like, Oh, okay, sorry, I understand. Like you literally derailed my life. No. And he didn't tell Paul for years until he, like was he was trying to save his life kind of thing and it's supposed to be like oh this is a noble thing you've done you've helped me escape no honestly no. he is so selfish i guess it was just wild to me because i'm like what's the best case scenario let's say i gets out in five years won't he come for you i mean maybe he was planning to find a way to yeah, get to over move. but you know what's really funny to me every interaction that danny had with edwin and his wife so his ex-girlfriend okay first of all edwin is a little bitch baby because i I had sex with your girlfriend 15 years ago and that's why you're mean to me in church we're in god's house get it together he was so jealous and petty I, you're watching i'm fixing your sink in your house you live in what calabasas you, or whatever you live in orange county or whatever you have money you got the girl you had the baby i'm literally your handyman i don't know if the girl can't freaking shut up about him then that can be annoying maybe step your game up edwin maybe if you were doing better your wife wouldn't be talking about a man that she hasn't seen in over a decade <laughs> no no ask yourself what you've done wrong oh my god it's the fact that i actually thought that like after that church scene where he broke down i was like okay let it out <laughs> let it out i thought okay maybe his life was start moving in the right direction i'm dead nope he was like let's scan the church but do you know what they both had moments of almost betterness so like after he did go to church he actually was like oh i wanted to call amy and apologize and it's isaac that was like fuck that bitch which yeah. is why isaac was also a tumor in his life that was just encouraging bad behavior and frivolous behavior but i really like the church scene because it's like they seem like really good people and you know they they want to include him in the fold and bring him into the brotherhood they just don't know that he's evil like mm -hmm. and <laughs> God the song was a one look slap look uh all of the songs were kind of bobs. Even when he was singing Amazing Grace, I was like, yes. <laughs> I was feeling the spirit. I was in my house like, yes. No, I completely, I'm just, I get it. Sometimes when you're in church, I don't know if you guys go to church, but sometimes the music, it just, you know when you get a little bit of a buzz from, from a sensation? Church gospel music, it does that. It does so that. his breakdown was very realistic. You know, he was he was feeling it. That being said, going to church once and crying does not fix all the things that is wrong with you. So I just perspective. I just I think it was just desperation. Like part of it 
it was absolutely his own stuff and even though i'm kind of calling him out for being you know having a savior syndrome for his parents that pressure is there and wanting what's good for your parents isn't a terrible thing like you don't want your 80 year old dad working and slaving away after they've been like sent out of the country against their will like if you think you can make it better I guess I think I can still I can <laughs> still get past what he did to Paul. Oh no facts. Oh, that's unforgivable. Paul being successful helps your parents and it puts less pressure on you. You, you know, can't say you want to be the only one. No, but you know he did that before they lost the motel. That was when they still owned oh, it. So okay. you know, I think he would it was one of those things you know me I've never been in a situation like that but i in every tv show and movie there's always like a character that just does an insane thing out of a selfish moment of lack of control and i don't i've never understood it something like rachel sending you know um that girl to the crack house because she was so jealous of her it's like in a moment you just put yourself first and do a really really horrible thing i just is yeah. that a real thing do people do things like that maybe if you are a horrible person maybe you're like <laughs> no because like this is not, this is your sibling i wouldn't even want to do that to my friend mm -hmm. Like if I was in a desperate situation or if I was feeling selfish or upset, I would still like think twice if it was my friend, but this is your brother and you guys have been like this. And that, that, that was the problem. He, he had like a weird anxious attachment to Paul because he, you know, he was bullied when he was a kid. I guess he feels like Paul is his safe space and like he was like that outweighs Paul having a good life and it's, I can't even. If Paul has a good life, can't you move into his house? <laughs> it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't, like, sh very short-sighted. Very short-sighted. But someone that I did a 180 on was Fumi. Like, I felt the same way you did at the beginning of the episode. Also, I didn't know Fumi was a Japanese name as well, because I keep thinking about the Yoruba version of mm -hmm. the name. Um, but every time she, like, in the first half of the show showed up and was condescending and looking at I was so irritated. I'm like, you know, why are you meddling in this marriage? It was giving all these mommy mommy's boy energy that she says things and then george will listen and amy's just suffering in silence but by the second half of the show i liked her more because yes she's selfish and annoying but she also like cares for her son and amy and she really didn't have to care for amy when she said that thing about like you know yes you said that you my husband i'm oh, sorry my son grounds you but you know you lift him up i'm like that's really nice that's, i mean that's sweet a mother knows her son best <laughs> she said, and she basically said my son is useless <laughs> because amy's the breadwinner yeah. now obviously she has to side with amy she's broke no but, she, but you know amy with amy said like if we split up he'll get 50 percent, and you will still be taking care of and she was like no it's not about 50 is not enough I that's it he's good to he's good to finish <laughs> it she knows her son she knows those bases are not selling so ugly so to me i really think that that's what it is i think that because of how amy viewed herself she viewed George as this person who was like so great, like who was like such a ray of sunshine and like her was like she was darkness. But the mom was just like, no, I know my son. Like I know he's doing his art things, but he's not as good as his father. Like this, this thing he's doing is not good. Please, people should stay together because this is it's I'm working screaming. out. Something that I really loved was the Asian representation and not just in like, oh, they're Asians in the show. Like I like that they specified like, you know, Amy's Chinese, George is Japanese, mm -hmm. Danny is Korean, and even like Danny not liking that George was Japanese, like the reference to like Korean and Japanese cultures. I was like, oh, look, look at that. Ooh. <laughs> and like they like there were Asian people everywhere. Like, you know, the therapist was Asian and it wasn't a big deal. Like it was just very well done and I really, really, really liked it. I, I like when we get stories that, let's be clear, they usually give to white people and they put people of color and they let their cultures and the language that they use and the foods they eat be part of the story. Yeah. And I, I really like that. Because Isaac was the worst, but whenever he, like, he was talking about respect and the terms of endearment that they should use to refer to each other, I'm like, this is very realistic. Like, you are a criminal and you're terrible and you're mad that I'm not respecting you by calling me the right name. 100% accurate. Very much. <laughs> yeah, no, I really like that part about the show too. Like, kudos to everyone involved. Um, it was very, very... The acting was great. The acting was fantastic. When Amy was like masturbating with the gun, I believed that she was having a good time, but I was also like, we need to call a mental health professional right now in this moment. I can't even begin to comprehend how that makes sense I, I, does she love danger she loves taking yes. risks i think it's a mix of her depression and wanting to commit suicide i think it's her feeling like she's trapped in her life and everything is super vanilla because even that weird promiscuous stage she went through in 2008 and the kind of sex she was having with paul versus what she was having with george clearly she was missing the spice in her life <laughs> 
but it was it was scary. I didn't even blame George. George was like, yeah, I changed the code on the gun safe because I don't know what's going on with you. <laughs> he was like, you know why I did it. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why you're asking me. I like my mind went everywhere, but what actually happened? I was like, okay, maybe she steals. Maybe <laughs> like maybe like, she almost killed herself and he found out. Like I I, I did not see that coming. I, I did not see that coming. How did you feel about like the ending of the show in the final episode? I'm I don't I understand that in the moment, like they were in a car accident, they were high. I understand feeling connected, but wake up, babe, wake up. Like this man, your child could have died. You could have died because he lied that you started a fire because he was too proud to admit. Like everything, like I said this at the beginning of the video, but everything that has gone wrong in this situation was Danny instigating. Especially, why did he come over to George's house when George invited him and Zane? If he hadn't come to the house, he wouldn't have found out that Amy was catfishing Paul. He wouldn't have told Paul. Paul wouldn't have, like, why? Why would you come to her house? You guys know you're avoiding each other because you've committed weird, terrible things to each other. Why did you do that? Yeah, and then befriending George and actually pretending that you guys are actually friends. It didn't make sense to me. Like, where were their friends? Cause like, Amy, Danny, they didn't have friends. I mean, they were both super depressed and focused on work and didn't really have lives. So I kind of see that. Like Amy spends the whole beginning, she's talking about, it's been two years, I've given my whole life to this, 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 this. She's not a friendly person. People just don't like Daniel. Although he did, he was hanging out with Isaac's people. So he had some people in his nah. life. They were hanging out because we were planning on how to scam people. I'm dead. It wasn't, it just, it didn't make sense to me because even poor depressed people have friends. <laughs> even rich depressed people have friends. <laughs> I mean, I guess they have surface level friends, but look, Danny befriending George it was the better catfish to Misha because what Amy did to Paul is worse than Danny kind of telling George, hey, your art is great and reaffirming his rubbish. Yeah, and like, what's so confusing? It's like Danny has these moments where he feels bad like when they planned on robbing mm -hmm. uh george and then when george said one nice thing to him he was like wait this is actually a human being with feelings who is a decent person maybe we shouldn't rob him and then he's, he called it off so it's like i don't get it i think the issue is that danny and amy just have a lot of anger and like it just erupts so like when they have time to think or be normal they're they take a step back but in the heat of it they just do the craziest thing like when he almost set her car on fire and then he saw june in the back like what was his plan to set her car on fire there would be cameras you're gonna get caught like but he wasn't thinking and i think it kind of shows when they meet to kind of figure out how to lie and someone else honks at them and the two of them just start screaming at this person hilarious but it's like you guys have anger problems or even when they were driving at the end of the show and they both go off the cliff because they're so mad and they're looking at each other like they are so angry and they're incapable of like handling it like a normal person they just go to 10 immediately so where's the anger coming from are they angry at the world are they angry a little bit at the world at themselves at their parents at the choices that have led them to where they are and you know amy can just move to france i'm screaming can like, she will she leave george will she bring george with her yes she was literally telling him hey let's move let's move far away and that was actually a feasible option for them because they are rich and they have resources <laughs> pay for therapy like there's ways. There's, there, ways. there's definitely ways. And you know, she when. She had a lot more options than Danny did. Oh, no, facts. You know, when they were tripping together and they were talking about, oh, we should talk more, we should have done this more, and we're connecting. That's great. We're all human beings experiencing the human experience, yada, yada, yada. You guys have literally destroyed lives. Like, this coming to Jesus moment you're having, what what's it doing now? Because even when George shoots him, I'm like, of course you're going to shoot him. Yeah. Like, the last text you sent me was that Danny has run me off the road. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Help. Also, George is a fool, by the way, because that thing where um, Danny shows up at the house and he's saying he's Zane and George lets him into the house, even though he knows who he is now, into the bathroom. And that's how things escalate. You know, he has the gun pointed at him and everything. What it's was like, your plan? Why did you let him into the house? Now June is gone and you're blaming Amy, but why did you let someone that you knew as a criminal into the house? He's not so smart. He's more, I'm telling you, his mother knows. His mother <laughs> knows. Like, he's not so smart. I, just, I hate when people do stupid things for no reason. You think this man is scary, so you're going to let him into the house where your child is. Mm. It makes no sense. I know. Oh my God. The scene where um, Amy is literally telling George everything that has happened mm -hmm. was so intense. I was just like, wow. When she put everything like that, I was like, okay, well, a lot has happened. And like, the first thing he says is like, I want a divorce and i'm like you know what no fair. fair. no because you, you put our child in danger you put our lives in danger and 
I don't blame George, but I am really proud of Amy for telling the truth. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have. I'm so I sorry. I take it to my grave. Because I don't even know how to explain what happened. I would have done exactly what Fumi wanted. I would have lied. I said we were just flirting on the internet. We never had sex. Yeah. Because what is that going to do for me? Especially because are we bad people? Because you know that's what Danny did. Danny lied to the end. He was still telling Paul that Amy's the one that started the fire. <sighs> Maybe lying is not good. But like, how do you even explain? What happened? Side note, I really don't like that they didn't make it clear how old Paul was because everybody kept calling him a kid. But I think they mentioned that he was three years younger than Danny. Exactly. So he's but, not a child. Yeah, because they just infantilized him. Yeah, because I think the college thing happened in like 2008 or whatever. Like, So he should be in his 20s. So yes, he's younger by a few years, but when they kept calling him a kid, I'm like, did she have sex with a 19 year old? It, like, it was confusing, but it's not, he's not a child. It yeah. seems like he's in his 20s. And, and that's why going back to something we said, I, again, I give her grace. Like you just, you're a grown man who chose yeah. to have sex with me knowing I was married mm -hmm. after I catfish. Do you make good decisions? He literally like made them drunk and passed out so he could steal uh, Danny's truck, not knowing that they had stolen equipment at the back of the truck to drive to Vegas to meet this woman. So he was really making a lot of sketchy choices. Bro, choices that he really did not have to make. And I, that's why I brought up like, they weren't even having sex at that time. You drove all the way to Vegas to sleep on her couch? Based on feelings, you've not done anything for someone Please, that, this is know... a public platform. <laughs> exactly, see, let's, let's see, we've all been there. <laughs> I don't well fine fine but yeah no the the things that happened stressed me out for the entirety of the show to me Danny is a villain I may see where some of his motivations come from but what he did is unforgivable I'm glad that George shot him I don't care if he lives or not but I'm sad that Amy's life is ruined there's no way to come back from this like Jordan is a billionaire that's dead like the courts are gonna press like yeah. this is not gonna be a oh citation people are going to jail people's careers are gonna be ruined oh naomi is coming for you like somebody that should ask herself why she killed her wife rubbish but yeah she's coming for yeah, you. yeah because like she gave it up that she planned the robbery she planned for them to come to the house yeah but i don't think she'll get in trouble for that when she explains like literally was to get my kid back like mm. it, like it was a ransom situation i didn't know anybody was gonna get killed and nobody would have gone killed if I, this is not blaming Jordan, by the way. If I was scared, God knows what I would do. But like, babe, you didn't have to run. You could have just sat there. It was the running that, oh, everything got really messy. Yeah. Moral of the story, I don't know. I don't know what the moral of the entire show is. I feel like the moral is deal with your anger and um, treat people like human beings because we're all going through things. Like literally from that first interaction, they both just assumed the worst of each other and kept taking it up higher and higher and higher before mm -hmm. we got to where we got to. But like, maybe she was having a bad day. Maybe the road rage did not have to get that far. Maybe peeing in her house was a shitty thing to do. Conversely, Amy should have just listened to George when he was like, let's let it go. He peed in our house, who cares? Instead of saying, oh, we have to go find him and everything. Like, mm -hmm. I understand wanting to get back at someone because if you peed in my house, actually I'm going to beat you up. <laughs> You are rich, you can have someone to clean it up. I, I, I think it's a disrespect, especially because I let you into my house. I was smiling with you, thinking you were a nice guy. I get it, but I think, like you said, they had a lot of anger, and now they felt like they had someone to point it towards. Yeah. And they thought that every single thing they did to get back at the other person would make them feel better. But when they didn't, they were like, Maybe I should, you know, take it up a notch. Maybe I should create this fake Instagram account. <laughs> maybe I should stop this person. You know, like, maybe, maybe it's. I'm really upset that George kind of wins at the end of this. He is obviously going to get full custody. He's going to get most of her money. And he gets to walk away looking like a good dad who did everything right and he wasn't a bad husband. He was a good dad. I don't know. About no, I don't think he was a bad dad. Situation. But like, he, he just walks away looking clean. And the way it will look to outsiders is, oh, the son of this rich artist helped this woman and then she crazed him out. But it's okay, he got out of it. That's kind of what happened. No, fuck that. That's kind of what happened. Like, yes, he is. It wasn't a great husband, but... I don't think there was anything he did that was really bad. I don't think anything he did was, mm, except for the man thing. I don't know, really bad, because now you're telling me, oh, let me help you go to your office and you're actually going to go to That's whatever. fair, that's fair. I forgot, I totally forgot about that. I'm that screaming. Emotional affair. It's, you're telling her I love you and then you're telling me I'm crazy. That's but, fair. But it's just, he's going to be fine. I, I think the fact that he's going to flourish, he'll find, he'll marry a new young woman who will stepmom, mm. June, and I don't know. Amy did terrible things. But her terrible things, again, really was mostly the affair. It was mostly the affair. Like, does that mean I shouldn't get half custody of my child? Because of small pennies? Okay, if you say so. Not because of that. It was because we <laughs> put her through danger. She got kidnapped. But isn't it equally me and George? George shouldn't have let him into the house. 
I shouldn't have done road rage. We both played in parties. Okay, how did this person come knocking at your door, wanting to all of a sudden kidnap your, your child? But, but if he had just kept the door closed and called the police, would he have kidnapped you? Well, I didn't know that you were messing around with crazy people. <laughs> I thought, you know, <laughs> things were going to happen, but not at this level. I'm screaming. I enjoyed the show though. Like, I did not know what to expect when I watched the first few episodes. I'm like, is this gonna just be like a normal thing? I know some people thought it was gonna be like an enemies to lovers thing. I was like, ew, gross, no, no ew. Um, so I'm glad that didn't happen. But it was very kind of tame for the first few episodes. Tame in the sense that, yeah, they're being crazy, but they're being crazy at a low level. By the time we get to like episode seven, eight, nine, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. I, I, I love it. Like I don't, 824 movies and shows, they, yeah, they, they do things. Because I remember watching um, Hereditary and Midsommar and being like, are these people on vacation? Is this just a family that doesn't get along? And it just keeps getting bigger. Um, and I, I don't know. I hope there isn't a season two. Yeah. Like, I don't, nothing good will come from season two. And no season two will make sense because everyone in their lives should really be shunning them at this point. Mm -hmm. So keep it as it is. It's done. It's a finished tale. I'm having a good time. You're having a good time. Let's not Netflix sometimes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, those are our thoughts. We hope you really enjoyed this video. Let us know about your thoughts in the comments. Who do you think was worse, Danny or Amy? <laughs> and yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye.